Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Hello Charlotte. Previously, things started going downhill, as our very reality and the way we look at started to collapse. So last time, we accepted. Um, I kind of knew that was the bad choice, so now we're going to refuse. When I take his hand, C will smile ever so brightly, so blindingly. It would be a genuine soft smile filled with sincere gratitude. His hand would tremble in mine. He'd still be anxious, unsure, afraid. I will tie my grip a little, reassure him everything's okay. Fear is a human emotion, see. Soon enough it will disappear. We will abandon our earthly shells and ascend to your divine domain. We will become gods. Together we'll bring order to this world. All pollution, everything that's unfair, humiliating, unpleasant, will be purified. All the dirty colors will be cleansed. We will become pure white. We will become happy. I don't take his hand. His eyes widen. I feel a growing lump in my throat. It's impossible to speak. I thought that you'd understand. See, please listen. Even if you're scared of this world, even if you hate it, even if it disgusts you, I... A deep breath. I want you to live. It's barely a whisper. The words reach his ears. Z's breathing becomes erratic. His knees give in. It's a panic attack. I watch him break down in front of me. My eyes feel dry. You're unfair, C. It's me who wants to cry the most. There's no place for us to go. A corpse of a god laughs behind my back. My sides. Couldn't you be any more dramatic? Acting all high and mighty, yet you've been saying it all for your own sake. The one who doesn't want to die is... I cover my ears. You, Miss Wiltshire. Despite all the self-harm, all the big dreams, and fantasies about self-sacrifice and whatnot. You still want to live your pathetic life until the very end. Please stop. Just admit it. That you're afraid to die. Deep down, you don't actually believe there's a place like heaven up above, do you? Even worse, there's nothingness awaiting you. You'll die only to achieve complete solitude in empty space of an afterlife. Not even your beloved Seth will be there for you. Why would they stay with you when they're bored to death when there are no quests to complete? Admit it. Even your puppeteer is with you only as long as you're entertained. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Don't worry, I'm still here. I'll see your story through to the end. I want you to be honest with yourself. We both know it, right? That everyone only wants to use you. Shut up! But why would it matter? You have me, Miss Wiltshire. Even in cold embrace of death, I won't leave you. There's nothing to be afraid of. You shall let this boy die already. I plunge forward, grasping Frey's throat, squeeze it with all I have. We fall down. I'm strangling Frey with my own hands. It's getting hard to breathe. I just want you to open your eyes. Look, can't you see this boy is dying to disappear for good? Was that a pun? He doesn't want to be saved. I make my grip harder. It hurts. He opened up to you. And look what you've done. You're the cruel one, Miss Wiltshire. I'm... Here they are. Seize them. A angels? You look kind of like the things that float over the doors. So, would you be as kind to explain yourselves? 
I... It was my initiative to leave the house, sir. I forced Charlotte Wilshire to come with me. Miss Wilshire, is that true? She, look as, she looks at me expectantly. It is. Then Mr. Wor Wordsworth, can I ask you for your reasons for violating school rules? Well, of course. I wanted a breath of fresh air. As I'm bidding for the god of this world to be inhaling such stale air every day. I ended up dragging Miss Wiltshire along with me against her will since she didn't feel well. I sincerely thought that would help her recover, you see. I see. Mr. Wordsworth, you are forbidden to leave your room until the day of the trial. As a punishment for your behavior, you'll be robbed of all social points you had until this day. Miss Wiltshire, you are waiting in class at the usual hours. I have an appointment scheduled for you at the laboratory. Considering the situation, a medical test will be absolutely necessary. Then we're going to have a counseling session in regard with your indecent relationships with classmates. After the trial, of course. Now return to your rooms, if you will. But read your books. Damn. Damn. You need to have cover for me, see? I only told the truth. Still, you've lost all social points. There's no way you can get past a trial like this. About that. But something I'd like to ask of you. What is it? If possible, please don't vote for me on the trial. If a sacrifice has to be made, it must be me. Don't put it like that. Please. It's my only wish. I don't belong to this world. It's only natural that it rejects me. That's why I ask of you, please don't vote for me. It's my last chance to leave this world. Just like that, you parted ways. Umbrella Man's words rang in my head. You need to have helped him. Frey's words followed. He doesn't want to be saved. A fresh memory of C's plea kept replaying over and over. Please don't vote for me on the trial. It's like giving up on a friend. Anyone here? No. Piano room, maybe? Nobody's home. The fog is pretty heavy tonight. Felix, you're around. Felix is feeding his famous flytrap of forceps. Huh. Nice. A box full of dehydrated bloodworms is standing on the table. His usual frowning expression is absent. Come on, seal your mouth. Here comes the food. After a moment, he notices my presence in the room. <clears throat> Can't sleep. I'm going back to my edgy form. Mm hmm. I sit beside Felix. The flytrap now closed seems to be enjoying its meal. I can make you peppermint tea if you wish to. No need to. It's okay. Hmm, <laughs> sounds Christmassy. Say, you still remember the time we went to the Oracle's world? Felix doesn't look away. There's no way I'd forget, right? The thing that happened in the end. What did it look like to you? Felix hesitates for a moment. It looked like you melting in the biomass right in front of me. What did it look like what did it look like to you then? It was like holding hands with a beautiful girl. Messed up, right? My whole head is messed up. Do you still stay true to the routine like I advised you? I do. Get up, go to school, and go back to sleep again. I believe that as long as I maintain those simple rules, my mind wouldn't crumble without the pills. Then, perhaps you should go back to taking the... No! I can't just do that. If you disappear... If everyone disappears, I'll... I'll... I'm sorry. Forget it. The trial is coming soon, too. What if you get chosen? I won't. I've made some friends. And I've done some socializing, too. So there's that. Is that so? I'm sorry I can't be of help. It's okay. You've already done for me more than you should have. Besides, I'm already a proper grown-up. So I should be able to handle my problems myself. Right. You're going to have toys. That's a little bit of a sassy pose. And a smile. But honestly, that naivety of yours is unbelievable. Suddenly the atmosphere in the room changes. 
Umbrella Man, did we agree that you wouldn't touch house tenants? Oops, I forgot. My bad, my bad. Are you afraid I'll hurt them? Umbrella Man brings out a scalpel from Felix's lab coat, bringing it to his throat. I feel like we're never in old times. Wait, stop it! <laughs> Although your reaction would be undoubtedly amusing, it's not my interest to have you completely utterly mind broken. Umbrella Man doesn't put the scalpel away, still playing with it in his hands. Why did you come, Umbrella Man? No specific reason. How's your new friend doing? Not so well. I've hurt him. I see. Umbrella Man laughs at Felix's voice as then shivers down my spine. Anyhow, I came to give you friendly advice. I want you to choose wisely on the trial. If you do, who knows? Perhaps you can save a life. That's all I can say. Bye bye. Next moment, Umbrella Man is gone. You look like you've seen a ghost. It's nothing. I should really go to sleep. Thank you for talking to me. Good night, Felix. Good night, Charlotte. I always jump behind, like, jump between the pronunciations of that. I don't know why. I feel like it's stubbornness in me. It's late already, but I don't want to go to sleep yet. I'm scared to see Frey right now. No one in the TV room. Bennett, maybe? What is it, dear girl? Can't sleep? Hi, Krampus. Yeah. I'll make tea. Which one would you like? Those oolong, honey bush, jasmine green, rui bush, good morning tea, gunpowder green, earl grey, lady grey, Christmas mix, Japanese lime. Japanese lime will do. Alright. I'll add a spoon of honey to it. Time for interrupting your duties. Pay it no mind. Unfortunately, inspiration often comes at night, rendering me completely unable to sleep in peace. I see. I'm a bit like that. Runs in my family. So, what is it that troubles you? If it's anger you need to take out, the piano room is always open. We'll play some really angry piano. Called Beethoven. <laughs> I don't think mashing chords in the middle of the night would help this time. Then, what is it? I... I guess I'm just tired. I want to rest for a while, but whenever I close my eyes, the slumbering god haunts my dreams. And when I wake up, new troubles only keep piling up. I see. Why don't you spend more time in the dressing room? I might have a few dresses you haven't tried on yet. I'm short on feedback, especially since Felix refuses to help lately. You see, he has a slender build, and you've been so busy at school lately. I got it, I got it. Thank you, Aiden. I'll try to visit more often. No one here. Afro, maybe? Nope. There was no one in the lab, so... Good night, Seth. Good night, Charlotte. I played a familiar that's called a town that doesn't exist. Very close to the memory book he was reading when he sees me. Long time no see, Miss Wiltshire. We just saw each other today. Look, don't make such a sour face. I want to make up with you. I've been doing some cleaning lately. If I can't be of help in the real world, I figured I'd help you clear up your mind, at very least. Look. Hasn't it become less foggy? I suppose so. Frey beams with excitement. Right. But why would you do that? I never asked for this. You see, I've read in your memory journals that you lamented over the fact that your mind became fogged over the years. And I figured it's in my power to aid you. You might not notice the changes immediately, but they will soon take place. I see. Frey lightly embraces me, nuzzling against my hair. Don't worry about a single thing, Miss Wiltshire. You will soon see that this world is not worth staying in. Sweet dreams, princess. Day 31. Maybe just skip five days. <laughs> I 
Nothing happens. Seems like the warp cube is broken, Seth. Let's look for the other way around. It's the front door that we just went to. Close for maintenance. Think you're using our services. Don't come again. Let's try using the warp cube again, Seth. It's organic, so maybe it's changed its mind. Is the warp cube even a thing? Like, does it exist in matter? Sure it's not your mind? That's weirdly random. Go away, ugly. Tells you a problem. You lost Wiltshire. So I think this, I think the way they're acting now is what we, what they really act like. Like that's the true, true thing. The whole, the whole previous thing, like where the princess was lies. But this lesson should organize in groups of three. Let me just too far away. She probably already found something to work with. Seth, find us a group. Yes, but we don't want you. Someone about a group yet? Ah! <laughs> uh. Let's just get out of here. This is Where are you going? Anyone? Hello? Let's go back to our seat, Seth. Working alone? Yes. Excuse me. I'll work with Mozart. Isn't that wonderful? I'm gonna join our desk together. Thank you, true friend. Despite you always like being cheap in the lunch room. Let's work together, Charlie. Right. I wonder if there's something like hinting with that Charlie name. Henry, so hungry. <laughs> I could have guessed. Buy something, okay? Oh, okay. I'll be way on the rooftop like usual. <laughs> Go away, mutilate students. Don't have time to socialize with you. Gotta go buy lunch. Healthy lunch. I don't have any money left for myself. Seems like we'll be skipping lunch today, Seth. God, I'm so sad right now. I'm so miserable at the moment. Like, oh. Oh. Oh, this is evil now. Oh, okay. I'm gonna choose on the bread I brought her. You know, Charlie, there are rumors about you and Vincent going around in the school. Vincent? What kind of relationship do you have with him? Relationship sounds way too heavy, Henry. I'm not sure he wants to talk to me after what happened. After what happened? Can't be. It's just as I thought. He was after your body. Huh? What did you do to do exactly? Nothing much, aside from all the ascending to the heavens thing. Oh my god, what? The bastard. So you didn't do anything bad, Henry. There's no reason to... Shut up! Might be a little dense in the head, but let me tell you. Boys who act all mysterious only want to use you. You may hide however long you want, but I know you're quite well endowed. Wasn't it a ki 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 I covered Henry's mouth with my hands. Stop it. Henry breaks free of my grip on my ease. <laughs> Look like a tomato. Jeez. By the way, why don't we go feed the strays today? Henry, you know, night cats we fed. Yeah, what about them? I- they- I feel a lump in my throat. They're dead. Oh, that's all my fault. It was me who brought them bad food and, and... What are you talking about? It was Seth who didn't do anything to stop us. Moreover, they ate it themselves. I could have done something. Seth would listen if I simply told him. That's true, I would have listened. That I... that they... My hands began shaking again. I feel the pilot's ink cries in my throat. Henry puts her hand on mine. Listen, 
Repeat after me. It's not my fault. I hesitate. She grabs my hand harder, her pretty nails digging to my skin. Do it. It's not... It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. See, it's not that hard. Right. <laughs> you still look down. Is there something else that worries you? Well, the trial is soon. I'm worried that the choice I'll make will be the wrong one. Why so? You'll vote for Andre, right? I mean, won't get angry after you that, silly. That's what friends do, after all. Am I wrong? Oh god, this is a big decision, I think. I, 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 I don't know. I'm actually not quite sure how this voting thing works. So who you vote for lives? Or who do you vote for dies? Hmm. I'll vote for you, Henri. As I thought. Of course you will. Henri leads in and kisses me. Oof. I freeze in place. And that's my Charlie. You should stop filling your empty head with useless things already. Why is everyone so twisted around me? I just want a normal life. Peaceful. Friends. That aren't, you know, twisted. All I have to do is tape on my sign. I'll make all your troubles disappear. All of them. Not stab you. I'll just stab everybody else. Oh, okay, you crazy Andre. School bell rings. Go back to class. Henry will join you later. Okay, until later then. Bye bye. So I went back. I wonder if Henry was always this forceful. Instead of looking happy after our lunch together like usual, I felt incredibly humiliated. I was sitting on my desk. That's the thing I want to tell you. Come to the rooftop after class and see. I wonder what happened. Class is class quickly. Check rooftop. That's not the roof. This is the roof. You're not! Yes. Can I just leave? Can I just like ignore them? No. Okay. What do you want? You want a bump? You want a bop? Let's do this. Come on, Charlotte, let's do this. Come on. I'm sorry. Have you seen a boy around here? Oh, they're down. They don't like a plain god that women spray around, huh? So who do you think you are? Some princess, royalty, Rapunzel, maybe? It's in here too long, why school norms? Hey, why don't we help our dear schoolmate out? Wait, what is this about? Not the hair, it's so fluffy! Well, the girls brings out scissors. They ever two hold me down, make me unable to move. Snip, snap. A lock of hair falls down. Keep quiet about it, okay? I'm gonna accidentally cut more than your hair. Please, don't cut it. Look! She thinks we'd listen if she asked. It'd be such a pity if our little princess get bought on the side, right? Snip, snap, snip, snap. Snip to snap. As new locks of hair fell down, I felt myself incredibly humiliated. What am I being punished for? Why does it feel so humiliating? Was everyone always like this? A familiar figure appears before me. Shouldn't you call for help, Miss Wiltshire? I don't want to trouble anyone. Who was the one to teach you that? Was it your mother? Be a good girl. Good always wins in the end. If you'll be kind, lovers will be kind to you. Violence is bad. All your life you're being manipulated by others. All because you care too much about opinions. Because you want to be loved by everyone. When things don't go your way, you find excuses. Don't you have any pride? There are things worse than getting beaten up. Going through such humiliation when all you have to do is take my hand and everything that's unfair will perish. It doesn't matter if it's just me who'll get hurt, Frey. No. We both know that's a cheap lie. In fact, you want somebody to save you. Very much so. 
but dare not ask of it, because you deem yourself unworthy. No response, huh? Fei sighs. So, where are your so-called friends when you need them the most? Friends can't always be there for me. Is that so? Just so you know, even if your friends abandon you, even if your mother abandons you, even if the whole world abandons you, I'll always be by your side. Please keep that in mind. She's gone silent. Oh, our princess of Neverland manners. Hey, is she even alive? Beats me. Someone's coming. What if it's a teacher? Run quick! I leave me lying among the remnants of my once long hair. There's a taste of ink in my mouth. I feel ill. Footsteps. More footsteps. The ones who hover above me. They're all familiar faces. The very next moment my head hits the concrete. Before everything goes to blank, I hear voices. Man, how disgusting. Hey, stop it! You might still be conscious! Who cares? Just get her out of here. Umbrella Man? Right, is that my mom's body? So, Miss Wiltshire, how does it feel now that the fog has lifted? Was it always like this, Umbrella Man? What was, my dear? Everything. The school. My classmates. I won't answer the questions you can answer yourself. You're a cruel person. It's just that I'm not cut out to be a babysitter, my dear. But honestly, you should reevaluate your relationship choices. Have you ever considered that your wonderful lady friend is not as good as you imagine her to be? Henry's not a bad person. Oh yeah, okay. And she would never manipulate people for her own selfish reasons. Nor would she write insults on a class blackboard, right? <laughs> but oh well, you will never listen if it's not Eiler pushing into the wall. Oops, wrong timeline. Forget I've forget I've said that. Say, fellow man, where do people go after they die? The woman closes his eyes, as if contemplating something. They become stargazers. Losing their earthly shells, they become able to go anywhere in the vast universe. So they just wander around? One can say so. They become the kind of existence that can be in any place imaginable at the blink of an eye. Can experience millions of years in less than a moment. Can linger with a living being and experience their life. Hearing their thoughts, feeling what they feel. Becoming a stargazer is part of a cycle of life. A purgatory period before one could achieve peace. It sounds nice. Perhaps. However, didn't you say yourself that you didn't want to make haste to see the other side? You know, my employers are rather fond of you. So conf coincidentally, it's in my best interest to see you alive and cooking. On another note, this woman whose body I'm currently borrowing has her shift ending soon. I guess she's just a nurse then. If you don't want any questions from her, I believe you should go home, my dear. Right. I should. And if you wish to cut your hair before anyone sees you, I suggest taking scissors with you. Look, if there are any in the cabinet. Clean sink. There's a pair of scissors in the cabinet. Take it. Come on, so if you want to make sure objects at home anyway. Take these scissors. Let's go home, Seth. Let's go to the bathroom, Seth. I can't let anyone see me like this. This is... Surprisingly depressing game. The last one had a little bit of hope. And this one's just... None. There's been a few uplifting moments, but there's been almost nothing in this game. This is a very... I'm not, I'm not complaining, actually. No, I'm, I'm just commentating, but... It's a very dreary storyline. I lift up the scissors. If you've ever experienced bullying, especially like very intensive bullying, uh, I'm pretty sure you might relate to some of this story. My hands are shaking. The scissors are sharp. Just one careless snip and it will all be over. Flowers bloom from my skin and I will no longer... Someone takes my wrist. It's Aiden. Krampus. You're a pretty nice guy for Krampus. Good evening, dear girl. 
Since when have you been doing your haircuts all by yourself? I didn't take the scissors away from me in one quick movement. Allow me to help. Do you have any image of what you want your new haircut to be like? Uh, I don't know. That's alright. I'll do something about it. I know this sound all too well. But somehow, right now, it's comforting. And done. I look into the mirror. A stranger's reflected in it. It's a corpse I've burned in the incinerator. It's beautiful, Ainan. Dying on the inside. It's honestly not that bad of a look for you. The puffy hair was bare, but still, it's not that bad. Thank you. I'm glad I could be of help. I'll be taking the scissors. Okay? Because he knows. Uh, okay? Ainan pats my head before leaving. If you ever need to talk about your troubles, I'm always here for you. Alright. Alright. The next moment, Aiden has gone. Hey, Seth. How about we visit Dr. Huxley, too? <coughs> oh, a new portrait. We're looking kind of like... The Pythias.